well as the dew of the years. Rise up and pray and let the Lord renew the years today. Renew thy strength today and let the willingness and the beauties of holiness that we have studied about tonight, let it now be in your life. Don't act tired. Pray and the Lord will enrich your life more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth and pray.
Everywhere you go, you meet people overwhelmed by life's struggle. Yes, the hardship, the sickness, the pain. Look to your left and right, and you can feel the heart's longing for an escape, searching for answers. Hello, Ghana. The GCK flight comes to the coastal capital city of Accra in Ghana. The land of freedom and rich diversity is set to experience God's freedom and diverse miracles. From around the world, we connect with international gospel evangelist, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumyi at the April edition of the Global Crusade, themed Glorious Visitation from Christ. Get set to encounter the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ as He visits us from April 20th through April 25th, 2023 at 1600 hours GMT daily and global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday. An exclusive conference for Christian ministers, church workers, and corporate professionals will be held on April 21st, 22nd, 24th, and 25th, where Jesus Christ anoints them with enabling grace and power for end time harvest. The Young Eagles are not left behind too at the Impact Academy for teenagers, campus students, and young adults on April 22nd. The GCK convener will propel them to the sky and fly upward to higher heights. Out of Independent Square, Accra, Ghana, the word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world and engaging worship led by Jared Anderson. It is your time for a life-changing experience. Tough times don't last forever. There is no doubt that we are all tired of the sorrows, pains, and deadness pervading the land. I have good news for you. Christ has come to guarantee true change this April at the Deeper Life National Easter Retreat. It's your time to experience Christ's resurrection power. From Thursday 6 to Monday 10th, April 2023, Join the nearest Deeper Life Retreat location around the globe. Christ's power will be unveiled by Pastor Dr. W.F. Komui and other anointed men of God. Everyone is welcome. The retreat time is a time of waiting before the Lord. I want to plead with you. Be present in every session. The Lord will fill your cup to overflowing. Come and taste of Christ's resurrection power. It's real. Amen. Shall we rise up to pray? Let's talk to God in prayer. Appreciate the goodness of God in your life. Let's thank God for the gathering at this time. What the Lord has done in each of our lives. What the Lord will still do as we continue in his presence. Let's rejoice for the wonderful benefit of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bless the name of the Lord for the expectation of his coming. Our God is good. We thank God for his mercy and his favor upon our lives. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We appreciate your goodness in each of our lives. Receive our appreciation. Receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Eternal God, 
Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the plan of redemption that brought hope to lost man. Greater benefits than what Adam lost. We appreciate Christ coming to the world to undertake for us to deliver from the dominion of sin and the power of Satan. We thank you for the hope of eternal rest in your kingdom. We thank you for giving us better, better opportunity than what Adam heard. Adam was dwelling here below in the Garden of Eden, but we have been given assurance that we shall dwell with you in your kingdom. For this, we praise your holy name, accept our appreciation and gratitude in Jesus' name. Righteous Father, we come before thee, and we pray that as we go into your word, your spirit will minister to our hearts. Lord, give us understanding. Lord, let there be no presumptuous attitude in any of us. Open hearts. Open mind to receive your word. Let this word bring transformation, cleansing. Let your word prepare us for your coming. Make us ready. Make us fit for your kingdom in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us please be seated. We are looking at a message that is titled, The Steadfastness of Rapturable Saints. The Steadfastness of Rapturable Saints. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us all that we need to know in preparation for his coming. We turn our Bibles to... Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 36 through to verse 42, Matthew 24, verse 36, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore. This information necessitates watchfulness. Watch therefore. No presumption. Watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. In verse 44 through to 46, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meet in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. How I pray 
that at his coming, he will find us ready and fit in Jesus' name. These are the things that serve as preamble for the coming of the Lord. And we are seeing them in our days, eating and drinking, festivities, ceremonies, uh, now the order of the day, and uh, fashion parade, pursuit after money, politics, and whatever. Those are the things that are very prevalent in our days. But Jesus is saying, we should watch. Because these things, activities, have the capacity to draw our mind away from the Lord, to preoccupy us with mundane things of this world, ephemeral things, things that seem to have value in the eyes and the sight of men, but things that have no value before the Lord, that we should watch and be careful. In addition to being watchful, is the assignment that the Lord has given unto us said he has committed responsibility to watch over his household and to give them their meat in due season. A faithful servant will perform. A faithful servant will obey. A faithful servant will carry out his duty, her duty. But if we neglect, if we overlook, if we get preoccupied with other things that he has not committed into our hand, his coming will be sudden, and that can lead to great disappointment. So he said, be ye ready. In our text, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ hinted on very important facts as follows. One, the certainty of his unannounced sudden return. The certainty of his unannounced sudden return. Number two, the situation of the world that is not prepared for his return. The situation of the world that is not prepared for his return. Number three, the faithfulness of dutiful and watchful servants. The faithfulness of dutiful and watchful servants. How I pray that God Almighty will help us to remain faithful and dutiful. Paul the Apostle also emphasizes the necessity of being steadfast in our commitment. We turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we read verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I pray our labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Personal reflection on our daily work with God. Consistent obedience to the word of God. Commitment to the work of the Lord and what full analysis or the fulfillment of prophecies are important to our readiness for the rapture. These, these essential factors are summed up in the message we are considering titled The Steadfastness of Rapture ready saints. The steadfastness of rapturable saints. 
wherever the fear of God rules the heart, it will show, it will manifest in piety, in godliness, in holiness, in righteousness, and in good works. In fact, we are made to understand that Jesus Christ gave himself to redeem us from all iniquities and to purify unto himself a peculiar people. And that redemption and the purification is going to bring forth something. It's going to qualify us for service. Zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. So where we actually have the fear of God, I'm talking of referential fear. The fear that makes us to flee from evil. When the fear of God rules our heart, our life will be governed by righteousness. And we will be involved in good works, doing it zealously. Actually, the fear of God and the works of righteousness are the substance of true religion. It is the evidence of the effect of faith, of grace in our lives. The grace of God in our hearts and in our life is the manifestation of living right and serving God zealously. It is, however, necessary to urge believers to examine their spiritual state, whether piety, godliness, righteousness is still in place, whether commitment is still in place, whether consecration is still in place, or whether religious activities have taken the kernel away, leaving mere husk, which in the sight of God has no value. There are certain factors for proper evaluation of our, of our steadfastness, which we shall highlight and examine as we delve into this message. Number one, working in his sunshine in readiness for his coming. Working in his sunshine in readiness for his coming. Number two, working, service. Working in his vineyard in readiness for his coming. Number three, weighing, evaluating our commitment in readiness for his coming. We look at point one, walking in his sunshine in readiness for his coming. Turn our Bible to Malachi. Let's turn our Bible to Malachi chapter four. Malachi chapter 4, we are going to read verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as cows of the stall. Jesus Christ succinctly declares, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that follow me, he that follow me shall not walk in darkness because he is the light. And if we are following him, if we are walking with him, we shall not, we shall never walk in darkness. We shall be in the light as he is in the light. That's why he said, he that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Our entrance into abundant life uh, is at salvation. When we turn away completely from all iniquities, when we receive forgiveness of sin and reconciliation to God, Jesus Christ, the light that lighted every man that cometh into the world, begins to shine in our heart, just as we have read in Malachi chapter 4 and in verse 2. In his light, true believers maintain steady work in the Lord. In his light, true believers work and serve in the vineyard of God. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. Let's back up to verse 6 of that same First John chapter 1 verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Walking in darkness and claiming to have fellowship with God is contradiction in time because God is light. In him, there's no darkness. And so the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, that is claiming to be in the light and is walking in darkness, is lying. That's why we are admonished in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to read verse 11. Ephesians 5. Verse 11, please open your Bible. We are told in scripture, the entrance of your word gives light. It's good we see what God has sent to us as written for us. And then we read it, we let it sink into our heart. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Remember? If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with the Father. And our fellowship is also with one another and the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we say we are walking in the, in the light and there is walk of darkness, which the Bible will reveal to us shortly, he said we lie. No truth in us. What are they? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, backbiting, 
evil speaking, slander, evil speaking, lying, evil speaking, gossip, evil speaking. All evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. If we claim that we are walking in the, in the light, these evil things will not be in our lives. James chapter 3. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 14. James chapter 3, verse 14. James chapter 3, verse 14. But if ye have bitter envy and strive in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, Devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Somebody says, I'm walking in the light. And these evil works are there in the heart, in the life of the individual. The Bible says that's not true. That's a lie. It's not possible. Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, we are reading verse 15. Galatians chapter 5, verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. We are biting, backbiting, slander, gossip, backstabbing. We cannot claim to be walking in the light. In fact, we cannot be doing the thing that God hates and declare that he hates and reveal that he hates and still be claiming that we are in fellowship with God. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm reading... From verse 16 all through to 19. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination unto him a proud look, a lying tongue, and hand that shed innocent blood through abortion by poisoning or by wicked acts, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, wicked imagination, unclean imagination, immoral imagination, feet that is swift in running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sweat discord among brethren, he that knock the head of two friends together, scatter them. She that knock the head of husband and wife together, scatter them. He says, these are abomination in the sight of God. These are evil. First John chapter 2. In First John chapter 2, let us read... In verse 9, the Bible is replete with caution and warning that we should not be presumptuous, that when we see this thing, if we ever see such a thing in our life, we should not claim we are saved. We should run to Calvary and wash and be made whole. We should let our sin be blotted away because they will not enable us, allow us to go at the rapture. It is an indication of not being ready, not being prepared, not preparing for the coming of the Lord. First John chapter 2, verse 9. In first John chapter 2, verse 9. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. 
He that claim to be a child of God but has hatred against his brother, against another believer, against a real a relative, whatever it is they have done. He said that fellow is in darkness because we are to forgive offenders. We are to let the blood of Jesus wash our hearts so that we don't have we don't retain any desire to retaliate any unforgiveness within no we let go verse 11 but he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth he's claiming she's claiming that she's going to heaven but no he doesn't know where he's going because he's walking in darkness. Darkness has blinded his mind, blinded his thought, blinded his action, blinded his perception. He does not know where he's going. She does not know where he's going. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes, has blinded our eyes. Chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. 1 John chapter 3, in verse Fifteen, whosoever hated his brother in his, is a murderer. Stop there for a moment. How many murderers will get to heaven? Not one. Except they have repented and their sins are washed away. But look at it here. Whosoever hated his brother in his heart is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer abortionist has eternal life abiding in her. A killer, a, a murderer, has no hope of heaven without repentance. Chapter 4, and you see here, it's talking about murder in the heart. Through hatred, through bitterness, through unforgiveness, unforgiving he refused to forgive offender, chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And in verse 20, 1 John chapter 4, we are reading verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? How can? I love God, but there's hatred. I will not greet him. I will not talk to him. I will not forgive him. No. That's contradiction in time. You can't be of God and retain offense in the heart and refuse to forgive offenders. First John chapter 1. I'm reading verse 5. First John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Let's for a moment just imagine the sun, the sun that shines. Do you see spot of darkness in the sun? It's not even possible to look at it directly. Even if you wear sunshade, and you look directly at it, you will not see spot of darkness because it's all light. And the Bible is telling us that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Can somebody, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, be involved in all these evils and still claim to be saved? What answer do you have? A person that has bitterness in the heart, a person that gossip and backbites, a person that will not forgive offender, can he or she claim to be saved? Didn't you remember that Jesus said, if you don't forgive those who offend you from your heart, neither with your father, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. Can somebody be gossiping, be cheating, be backbiting, have animosity, evil desire, pornography, masturbation, and still be claiming to be saved? No, not at all. Come with me to Malachi again. Malachi. Malachi chapter 4, in verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, 
Verse 2. But unto you that fear my name, the fear of God is to depart from evil. The fear of God is to depart from iniquity. The fear of God is to hate what is evil. And if a person say he has the fear of God, he will depart from iniquity. He will depart from unrighteousness. He will depart from ungodliness. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise. He is the light that lights every man that comes to the, into the world so that we can walk in this light. He, he said, I'm the light of the world. He that walks with me will not walk in darkness. He that followeth me will not walk in darkness. And if there's any stain of darkness, that's sufficient evidence that that individual is not walking in the light. The sun of righteousness shines into our souls through the sacred word. And also, we keep communion with God through the sacred word. The word of God is the center of our relationship with God. He guides us, he instructs us, he directs us, illuminates our mind and tells us this is the way we walk therein. He's the word of God that is the roadmap to heaven. He's the word of God that prepares us for his kingdom. This is the meaning of walking in the light. And as we walk in his word, as we walk in the truth, our relationship with God continues to flourish. In fact, our devotional life, very important. Our devotional life, very important. That's how we walk in the light. Maintaining rich devotion. Our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated that practical intimacy with God is greater than activity. Practical intimacy with God is greater than activity. Activity, activity, activity. And uh, the Lord of the work is not cons consulted. No communion, no intimacy, no fellowship. That activity lacks value. Maybe just like chaff. Because what makes our endeavors in the vineyard of the Lord to have value is our intimacy with him, our communion with God, our regular prayer. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark chapter 1 in verse 35. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. He went to a solitary place, and there prayed. The richness of our devotion reveals the depth of our love for God. It is by these means, regular devotion, that we keep up a believing expectation of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Fresh devotion, fresh renewal, our expectation is brightening every day. As we come to communion with God, the Spirit of God reminds us, be prepared, be prepared. And if there's any stain, anything that needs immediate attention correction, we do it promptly. Because as we come into fellowship with God, regularly and consistently, our life is renewed and refreshed. At the end of every ministerial outing, Jesus Christ will separate himself for a period of prayer. In Matthew chapter 14. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Alone with the Father praying. Alone communion with the Father. In Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, verse 45. Mark chapter 6, verse 
45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, why he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. He departed into a mountain to pray. That's, that was his lifestyle. That was his habit. That was his practice. In Luke chapter 11, and in verse 1, Luke 11, verse 1, let's open our Bible. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. This act of consistent personal prayer sets an example and pattern for us. Steadfast commitment cannot be sustained without spending time in prayer, in meditation for renewal, without having communion with God consistently. This is because commitment can decline gradually. If it is not renewed by fresh consecration, it can decline, depreciate. That brings us to the second point. Walking, serving, walking in his vineyard, in readiness for his coming. In Titus chapter 2, Titus Chapter 2, we are reading verse 14. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. He gave himself for this purpose, Salvation of mankind, holiness in our life, in order for us to be fit for service, in order for us to be involved zealously in good work. And what is the work we are to do? Number one of priority is preaching the gospel. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16. We're reading in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye.